Elgin Hour. Brought to you by the Elgin National Watch Company. Makers of Elgin Watches. The beautiful way to tell time. Wadsworth Watches. High in value, low in price. And Hadley Fan. The perfect complement for any watch. All quality products of the Elgin National Watch Company. You can give or own nothing finer than an Elgin. The beautiful way to tell time. Down, Musgrove. Down, Down boys. Get away. Get away. Absolutely Good morning, Mr. Silchester. I've laid the egg, sir. I know. I just heard your cackle of triumph. <laughs> oh, sir. It's fine today, sir. Well, I shall be a better judge of that after I've tasted it. Oh, not the egg, sir. What, the, the egg is not fine, Alice? Oh, yes, sir. But you just said it. Oh, it's the weather that's fine, sir. Oh, you professor chaps, you're all alike full of big words. But when it comes to talking every day like with people, well, it's not you as foreigners. Alice, I spend the major portion of each year extolling the virtues of medieval poetry to a collection of teenage brigands whose appreciation of verse is largely confined to the extemporary efforts to be found on their dormitory walls. I came down here for the summer to avoid talking every day like, or any other way like, with people or anybody else. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Alice. Yes, sir. My honey, Alice. I've been here only three weeks, but surely in that time you must have realized that I always take a bit of honey with my breakfast. Yes, sir. Well, in that case, kindly fetch some. I'm um, sorry, sir. You're all out of honey. Oh, but I must have my honey, Alice. Why, why didn't you go to Boddick and get some more? But I went to Mr. Boddick, sir. Directly I saw your honey was getting low. Well, surely he didn't refuse your custom. Oh, no, sir. It's just he's, uh, 
He's give up his bee, said he couldn't make him pay, he said. Oh, Alice. Kept dying off, he yes, said. Yes, but Alice, I mean... Going you're... back to Hungerford, he asked her to his brother's farm. Oh, just his brother's farm. Yes. I mean, how am I expected to procure honey if every beekeeper in the neighbourhood goes out of business? It, it took a week searching to find Bodick. Well, lots try taking it up, sir, but it never seems to work round here. Except Mr. Hargrove, sir. He seems to make it pay. Well, then, then why didn't you approach Mr. Hargrove with my business? Mr. Oh, I didn't think you'd like to deal with him, sir. No. Funny sort of chap he is, him and his missus. Always keeping themselves to themselves. Never coming into town. Can't get friendly with them, no matter how you try. Yes, but Alice, and I mean, many say... there are who've tried. Alice, my requirements are a fortnight's supply of honey. Not the establishment of friendship with a beekeeper. Kindly acquaint me with the whereabouts of Mr. Hargrove's farm, and I will go there this afternoon. Very good, sir. I'll write it down, sir. Oh, dear me, no, honey. Surely some future reward is due to me for all this suffering. The, the sign says, ring bell for honey. I'm a reading man myself. Huh? Oh, quite. Well, uh, uh, suiting the action to the word, I, uh, I rang. It doesn't always work. Huh? It's an old bell. No, oh, quite. Yeah, well, in, in, in the matter of honey... I have I... it in jars and combs. Well, I should require six combs and six jars. You have a taste for honey. Well, sufficiently developed to cause me to go to certain pains to acquire it. C can you let me have a like amount each fortnight? If my bees keep making it. Ah, yes. This part of the countryside is excessively hard on bees, I understand. I've no complaints. Oh, well, you're a fortunate man. Mm -hmm. You really think so? Mm -hmm. Wait here. Oh. You'll get your honey. Thank you. Gentlemen here want six of each. Shake a leg. Go on, get it yourself. My wife. Oh, quite. Uh, that is to say, uh, indeed. <laughs> <coughs> I don't wish to startle you, sir, but might I have a word? Oh, I'm afraid I gave you a turn. Well, I was certainly quite unaware, sir, that I was being spied upon. Spied upon? Oh, you mean the glasses. Oh, disabuse yourself, my good sir, of any thought that you were the object of my scrutiny. Although I can see at a glance that you would repay closer inspection. Oh, would I indeed? Oh, I meant no offence, sir. One is naturally interested in humans who wander so far from their usual paths and habitats. Now, sir, what brings you to this unfamiliar section of Ashton Clearwater, when you obviously prefer to spend your time further south? Well, you, you know where I live, then. <laughs> I have not that honor, sir, but... But the clay that clings to your shoes and your stockings is definitely of the variety that is prevalent south of the village. <laughs> Bachelorhood has its advantages, sir. But in many respects, the ministrations of a housekeeper cannot take the place of those of a wife. Don't you agree? Well, well but what, what gives you the impression that I am a bachelor, sir? My hmm? dear sir, a devoted wife would never allow her spouse to wander forth in shoes so sadly in need of the brush. 
Our housemaid is not nearly so conscientious. I see. I also see that your trousers... Uh, quite. We are both self-contained men who find the joys of the recluse far weightier than the disadvantages. Indeed, sir. We may find that we have much more in common where we to investigate. Huh? Then won't you join me, sir? I live just a little way down the road. I don't think you'll find the walk too much for you. And I can promise you a not too disagreeable tea upon the right. You wish me to accompany you, sir? For what purpose? The purpose of discussion, sir. I never discuss. Not even a subject which I have reason to believe is very close to your heart? Close to my heart? How can you possibly know what is close to my heart, The sir? subject is honey, sir, for which I believe you have an inordinate taste. Honey? And bees. I have no interest in bees. You have, I presume, an interest, mild though it may be, in preserving human life. Believe sir. me, sir, I would not dream of intruding upon your cherished privacy. Were it not a matter of such importance that once I have mentioned it to you, I feel sure you'll forgive my rudeness in speaking to you. Important, sir. One might almost say a matter of life and death. Upon my word, sir. I... Look here. Who are you? My name is Mycroft, if you will. Oh, I'm Sidney Silchester. How do you do? How do you do? This way, please. do research in bees, Mr. Mycroft? Oh, yes, indeed. Since my retirement from public life, I found it a singularly absorbing pastime. Oh, you at one time held some public position? A private position, sir. Which occasionally found its way to the public eye. Oh, now, sir, I'm sure you must have learned of the difficulties in acquiring honey in these parts? Oh, I have indeed, sir. You, you've no idea how delighted I am to have located Hargrove. Yes, the bees evidently do not thrive around here. No, I, I can't think why. I can. Hmm? Uh, be so good as to step over here and view these two exhibits which I'm sure will arouse your interest. Well, it's, um, it's a dead bee. Quite. <laughs> I don't see what's over the end. Use but... this, please. Hmm. Now, what do you see? Well, my eyesight is excellent, Mr. Mycroft. I see the same bee I saw previously without the benefit of magnification. It's considerably larger now, but I, uh, I venture to suggest uh, <laughs> no dead eye. Your observation is unarguable, sir. I will now press gently with the tip of this forceps upon the stomach of the creature, thereby forcing the poor dead brute to extend its sting. Yeah. Uh, this was one of my bees, Mr. Silchester. Oh, very touching. There. Yes? The sting, you see, is now extended. Yes. Well, I do this merely to acquaint you with the size and shape of a normal bee. Yes. Kindly continue to watch, sir, through the glass, while I perform the same operation upon this second dead bee. Another of yours, sir? I have not that honor. Oh. Ready? Yes. There. Good heavens! Quite a perceptible difference, eh? Upon my word, sir, but, but, but that sting was three times the length of the first one. And three times the strength, sir. And charged with a venom of sufficient virulence to kill my dog in five minutes. Good heavens, sir, but, but, but whence came these killer bees? I am convinced, sir, that those are the bees, the product of whose labor you are presently carrying home to enjoy upon your breakfast table. What, Mr. Hargrove's bees? The one man, sir, who is able to thrive upon honey-making in this neighborhood. My own hives have been sadly depleted by the raids of his murderous bees. My own dog, as I told you, died not after half a dozen stings from those same monsters. Good heavens. Happily, I am possessed of a smoke device of my own invention, which temporarily routed the invaders. But they will be back for another chance, so make no mistake about that. Hargrove will not rest until he has put every beekeeper in this locality out of business. Oh, oh my words, excuse me. I, well, I, I, I never heard of a man breeding a special kind of bee in order to decimate competition. My before. dear sir. Yes, but, but look, my dear sir, why, 
Why on earth should you attempt to interest me in this matter? But surely, my good sir, it must be obvious to you that if I'm to move against this man, I must have help. But surely you don't propose to involve me. My first. good sir, how long do you think it'll be before the creator, this unbelievable instrument of death, will tire of wasting its staggering potential upon mere insects? Do you mean to intimate, sir, that... A man has bred a bee that destroys its fellow. Suddenly, he has discovered that his mutation is powerful enough to prove fatal to a good-sized dog. Think, my good sir, think! What will be his next move? His next experiment, if you will. Well, I, I, I think you're deranged, sir. Well, I, mark I, my I... words, sir. Before very long has passed, the animal kingdom will cease to satisfy his evil ambitions. He will look elsewhere. Uh, well, I, I, I'm very much afraid, sir, that this matter seems to me, when placed in its proper perspective, to be merely a controversy between rival beekeepers. Not being a member of that happy breed, I, I fail to see wherein my services can be of use to you. Uh, good, good day, sir, and thank you for a most diverting quarter of an hour. I... As you wish, sir. And I, in turn, hope that you enjoy your honey. I hope you won't be late for tea. Ramona, the bread and butter will get stale. Good evening. Good afternoon, Alice. Good afternoon. I have replenished my honey supply, and I beg you this time to give me ample notification of its imminent depletion. Did you, uh, did you go to the Hargrove, sir? I did, Alice, and I must compliment you on the reasonably accurate directions you gave me for locating the place. Now, if you'll just put this basket on did the shelf... Did you... I... Did you see Mrs. Hargrove when you would say her, sir? I did not, Alice, but I was subjected to the full range of her low tones. Then you must have been there just before. Before what? Before it happened. For heaven's sake, girl, be articulate before what happened. They're talking of nothing else in the town, sir, but of how suddenly poor dear Mrs. Hargrove, in the fullness of her strength, as you might say, sir, was struck down. Struck down? Dead, sir. Stone cold dead. Good heavens, how? But I, I was right there on the premises. I mean, if it was something infectious. Oh, it I... was the bee, sir. Without a word of warning, they turned on her. Stung her to death, they did, sir. In a matter of five minutes, she was gone. Stone cold dead. <laughs> Two of Sting of Death. Ramona, the age is not the brown to die. Ramona, he did, he did, da 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 Good morning, oh, Alice. My poor heart. Breakfast ready, I take it. Oh, what a shock he gave me. Ah, splendid. <coughs> it's fine today. I'm aware of that, Alice. The condition of the weather is fully as perceptible when observed through my bedroom windows as from the other portions of the premises. Now, what have we here? Alice! Yes, sir? Alice, as upon a certain melancholy past occasion, you have neglected to provide me with my morning allotment of honey. Yes, sir. Oh, you perceive the omission? Yes, sir. And you did nothing to rectify your dereliction? No, sir. Oh, well, thank you for your blunt answers. I shall now put a further question to you. Why not? The honey's gone, sir. Gone? There isn't a speck of it in the house. I see. Well, my next question has, perforce, a rather more pointed tone to it. Who, may I inquire, has been at it? Been at it, sir? Yes, Alice. Who has eaten my honey? Why, you have, of course, sir, every bit of it. Alice, I must ask you to observe my face and manner very carefully. It may serve as an extremely useful lesson in patience and self-control. I do not fume, you will notice. I do not bluster. I do not stride about the room. You could not, no matter how carefully you examine me, detect the slightest trace of heightened coloration in my countenance. In fact, I am known around the faculty as Cool Silchester. 
left it. Are you observing me, Alice? Uh, yes, sir. About the Precisely, honey. Precisely, Alice. About the honey and tea. It is, it is about the honey that we are speaking. I should like to point out to you that my daily consumption of honey amounts to a very generous helping with my breakfast and a, a rather more modest portion with my tea. Now, only a very few days ago, few days, I secured a, a It was almost fortnight. three weeks, sir. What was? When you got the honey, sir. See, but th that's impossible. Oh, but I remember it well, sir, because it was the day poor dear Mrs. Hargroves died. You're perfectly right, Alice. It was almost three weeks ago. Yes, but that, that does not entirely absorb you from failing to replenish the supply. Oh, but you wouldn't want me to go to Mr. Hargroves, sir, not after what happened. But, my dear Alice, the coroner's jury was quite definite in finding Mr. Hargroves entirely free of any negligence in the unfortunate death of his wife. <laughs> the bees! The bees, Alice, as I understand it, were ordered destroyed by the court. I mean, naturally, one would hesitate at eating honey made by a hive of homicides. But Mr. Hargrove has procured fresh hives, I understand, and is now keeping completely docile and dependable creatures. Uh, am I not stating the truth, Alice? Maybe, sir, but I wouldn't go near Mr. Hargrove's nut for nothing. Oh, very well, Alice, so be it. But I see that I shall have to make my way once more to Mr. Hargrove's. You may clear, Alice. Yes, sir. Yes, I, um, I, I understood that you might once again be selling honey in. Yes, sir. Yes, I gather that these are different bees from the ones which... Uh, put they are, sir. Oh, yes. I have a way with bees. Yes, sir, I'm informed. Uh, are you? Hmm? By whom? Oh, th that is, I, I mean, say, well, you're very fortunate. I, I mean, the Does majority of the beekeepers... Does a job? Ah, yes, of course, yes. Let me see, you require six jars and six combs. That's right, yes. Come inside, I'll get your order for you. Oh, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Let me have your basket. There you are. <laughs> Wait here, oh. if you will. Certainly, very well. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, thank you very much. Make myself comfortable indeed. <laughs> Place could do with a thorough cleaning. Confound it! My word, what now? Hey, you, you, you dropped a jar. Yes, smashed it. Clumsy of me. Yes. What a mess. Hmm. Give myself rather a nasty cut, too. Yes, sir, I see. I see. Disinfectant and a bandage, I'd say, without undue delay. I, I presume you have such things on the premises? Oh, yes. Hmm. Here, you can't be too careful with glass, you know. No. Oh, there we are, yes. Uh, I'm afraid I'm far from ambidextrous. Would you mind? Oh, not at all, no. Well, uh, a bit of cotton would help, I think. In this cupboard, same shelf. Right. I'm sorry to put you to all this bother, but uh, I'm absolutely useless with my left hand. Oh, not at all. Yes, well, I, uh, I don't think it'll prove fatal. So, uh, <laughs> yes, well, we, we'll try the, the disinfectant first. <clears throat> Careful now. <laughs> oh, this thing? Well, uh, a bit. It must be good. It, it, it absolutely reeks. Now, careful now. <laughs> Ow! I'm awfully this. Sorry, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Did you get some over you? Well, yes, I did, rather. Phew, she will I, I do. Just that it's washable. Oh. Oh. There, now, the, the bandage. <coughs> there we are. There we are. <coughs> Much obliged to you, sir. Not at all. Now, if I could have my honey. Well, there it is. Oh, thank you. Yes, you, you may send me the bill, the same address. And... Of course, sir. Yes. And uh, thank you again. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, th this way? That's right, sir. Goodbye, sir. Oh, goodbye. And uh, if any of your friends share your taste for honey, you might let them know I'm keeping bees again, will you? Oh, I certainly will, yes. Good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> 
Good afternoon, Mr. Silch, sir. I was just off to do a bit of shopping, sir. Oh, very well, that is. I've laid out your tea in the dining room. Thank you very and much. And the kettle's just coming to the boil now. Thank you, Alice. Oh, you've bought some more honey, I see, sir. Yes, I have indeed, Alice. Good afternoon, Alice. Good afternoon, sir. I'll be back in a jiffy. All right, Alice. Oh. Yes? By the way, sir, you had a caller. A caller? I didn't notice any blind men in the vicinity. Oh, he wasn't blind, sir. Oh, illiterate then? Oh, sir. Alice, when you informed me that I had a caller, and when I recollect the quite plainly printed notice outside stating unequivocally no callers, I can only conclude that the interloper was either blind or unable to read. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it was a Mr. Mycroft, sir. Mycroft? Oh. Oh, all right, Alice. Well, you may go about your shopping. Thank now. you, sir. Your tea is laid on the dining room table, and the kettle is just coming to the boil. Thank you, Alice. Uh, Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> Do you, do you believe in, in providence, Mr. Mycroft? I do not, sir. Oh! I, I'm sorry. Your pardon, please. You'll be a bit stiff, but that's all. Other than that, I think you can count yourself amongst the world's fortunates and the world's irresponsible. I, I can offer no excuse, sir. Pray look with merciful eyes upon my ignominy. <laughs> Certainly. It's just as well you weren't wearing this. Yes, hence my remark about Providence, sir. 
I mean, if you hadn't happened to be passing with your special bee smoker... Happened, Mr. Seltzer, sir? You do me an injustice, sir. I am not in the habit of taking an afternoon stroll with a bee smoker instead of a walking stick. But surely you couldn't have known what was going on. I mean, you didn't come here on purpose. My dear sir, upon the occasion of our first meeting, I perceived you to be in possession of a basket containing, at a vague and hasty guess, a supply of honey calculated to last about a fortnight. Am I right? Quite right, sir. A fortnight I... or more having passed, it was safe to presume, I think, that the supply had become exhausted. And you would be in the market, as it were, for fresh supplies. Well, so what you say is undoubtedly true, sir, but never This morning, I... sir, I learned indirectly that Hargrove was once more selling honey. I, knowing that gossip travels fast in small towns, I came here at once to plead with you to stay well clear of Hargrove and were told that you were out. Well... I could think of only one place, Hargroves. I rushed home, seized my bee smoker, returned here, dispersed the villains, rendered you first aid, thereby sparing you perhaps more serious incapacitation. Well, of course, when you outline it in that fashion, well, it, it, it's scarcely more than child's flesh. Mr. <laughs> Silchester. Sir? Sir, are you aware, sir, that not more than half a mile from this spot there is a man who merely in a spirit of scientific investigation and all-round good fun is actively planning your murder? Good heaven, Mr. Sir. Silchester, unless you listen to me carefully, unless you hear me out, believe what I say, follow my instructions to the letter, to the letter, sir, you will be hunted down and murdered in a manner as excruciatingly painful as any I've ever encountered in all my years of research. Oh. Mr. Silchester. And now back to Act Three of Sting of Death. I had anticipated, Mr. Silchester. Our bereaved friend has been far from idle during the period of his melancholy. The bees that succeeded in, in killing poor Mrs. Hargrove are playthings compared to this latest crop. Those new hives are the barracks for an army of killers. Good heavens. Like the world has never in its most bestial and destructive moment has ever even contemplated. But why, sir, has he, has he picked me out as the victim of his villainy? Destiny has delivered you into his hands, Mr. Silchester. The man bears you no will, Will. You are simply available to him. But I simply cannot understand, sir, what is the motivating power behind the evil designs of this man? I mean, does, does human life mean nothing to this maniac? Less than nothing. He is the master criminal. And the more deadly because he has no motive for his crime other than the perfection of an ideal and undetectable weapon of murder. And it is undetectable, as you can see. Who could conceive of a man breeding bees merely for murder and then being able to aim them, so to speak, at his victim? Well, when it comes to that, sir, how does he aim ah, them? Through the use of a liquid, sir. A liquid of his own devising which has the property of infuriating the bees when they sent it. Not all bees, only his bees. Yes, but sir, I End still don't... day, sir, through the simple device of deliberately cutting his hand, persuading you to help him dress the wound, he succeeded in anointing you with enough of the bogus disinfectant to draw his bees directly to your house. Oh, I can assure you, sir, I'm more than anxious to provide myself with a sample of this deadly lure. Well, I dare say, sir, the police will discover samples of this liquid when they, when they raid the premises. No. I dare say they will give you a small amount. The police? The police, sir. Surely you intend to notify them at once? My dear sir, surely you must realize that the police are quite helpless in this matter. They demand motive. And I've already demonstrated the complete lack of motive in this situation. But am I to understand, sir, that this man is to go completely unmolested and that I am to spend the remainder of my days in constant dread of imminent attack by swarms of homicidally inclined bees? By no means, sir. Where the hands of the police are tied, I, as a private individual, may act. And for that reason, sir, 
I invite you to join me in a stroll down to Hargrove's farm. But uh, you, you wish me to go there? My dear Mr. Silchus, the safest place for a prospective victim is on the threshold of his would-be murderer. Besides, he's already selected you for a long-distance test. He won't waste you at close range. Sure, very comforting, I'm sure. Well, what, what do we do when we get there? Experience in these matters, sir, has taught me. It is best to wait for the inspiration of the moment. <laughs> Shall we go? Huh? Yes, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Uh, this is a gentleman who... Uh, yes? Uh, uh, who has been apprised of the excellence of your honey and has so far caused a breach of village etiquette as to persuade my good friend here to introduce us. Uh, yes. You mean my bees, honey? To be sure, sir. For the beekeeper is entirely dependent upon his bees. Isn't that true? <laughs> Many has been the time, oh, I confess it openly, when I have toyed with the idea of keeping bees myself. No, really? But I always rejected the note. Oh. Beekeeping is not everybody's game, eh? No. I dare say you could say a word or two on that score, huh? I'm not an idle talker, sir. Ah, there's the nub of it. The man of action, of course. Maybe I've hit on something. Bees are indefatigable workers, and naturally their sympathies will go to one of their own kind, not to a mere talker like me. No, if That's you come the answer, sir. If you keep cows, be contented. If it's chickens, be gregarious. If it's bees you keep, be busy. But, Jove, sir, I really think I've hit upon something at last. Uh, do you wish for some honey, sir? I crave it, sir. Good, I have sir. found honey to be the most efficacious balm in the world for sore throat. And I am a man whose inordinate loquacity makes him a constant martyr to sore throat. I believe I can supply your wants, sir. Splendid. I'll be so grateful to you. Shall we go in? Thank you. Oh, delightful. Really delightful. You have a magnificent pile here. Beekeeping is not my fault, sir. But early English architecture is. I'm afraid I... Tudor, don't... isn't it, sir? I venture I... to suggest, sir, that the British Historical Society has often approached you with a view to acquiring these premises, eh? I don't know anything a about them. A fine, sir, a veritable fine. Take my word for it. Oh, Silchester, those beams, look at them. And so well preserved. Upon my soul, if this is not an authentic example of... Oh, <coughs> Silchester, you're on my craft. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is it his heart? Oh, oh Silchester. My waistcoat, the left side. What are they, these? Two, two tablets. A glass of water, please. Oh, water. Well, there's uh, some water, quickly. None in the house. One? Well, outside. Well, get it from the mailman, quickly. Can't, can't you see? Oh, I mean... Of course. Yes, Mr. Mycroft, I... Mr. Mycroft! Quiet! There's not a moment to be lost. That well's not more than 15 feet from the house. Where did he get that disinfectant? In there. Stay here. Warn me of his return. Oh, very well. <laughs> Give, give that to me. Your, your pills, sir. Your pills? And, and, and the water. Uh, uh, better? I crave your pardon, sir. If you'll allow me to stay here for a few moments, sir, I'll be sufficiently recovered to continue my negotiations for the hunt. Oh, of course, sir. Take your time. 
These dreadful seizures. Excuse me. Windows. Then be so good as to put that jacket on the fire. What? There's no time for sentimentality. It may have some of the liquid on it. Oh, good heaven. Now then, when you've finished, come over here and scrub your fingers with this cotton. Well, what, what, what is our next move, sir? Ah. To render ourselves as immune from imminent attack as is humanly possible. You mean to intimate, sir, that he would attack us here? My dear sir, the game's afoot. Oh, the man's no fool, I assure you. By this time, he's discovered our theft. He knows we mean to oppose him. He has but one alternative. Destroy us first. Well, then we must telephone the police immediately, sir. I'm not a telephone subscriber. Well, then I shall go to them myself. Mr. Silcher, sir. I warn you, don't take one step from this house. Otherwise, I won't be answerable for the consequences. And scrub your fingers. Well, but but, but what, what is our next move, sir? We prepare to do battle, sir. We gird our loins to fight this menace. Yes, but with what weapon? The only weapon at our disposal. Here is our heavy artillery, sir. The weapon with which we hope to meet out poetic justice. You'll find some whiskey in the corner cupboard. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Shh! Sir? Did you hear anything? I did not, sir. Aha! My hearing is very acutely developed. We're about to be paid a visit by the gentleman who is currently occupying our thoughts virtually to the exclusion of all else. What? Hargrove coming here, sir? The man's desperate. His life is at stake. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. But so surely you, you don't intend to let him in, sir. Oh, my dear Mr. Silton, sir, don't be alarmed. I have accepted full responsibility for your safety. Well, I'm deeply grateful, sir, but what is my recourse if you fail in your responsibility? All right, my good sir, there's some element of risk. I dispute that, dispute sir. Dispute it at your leisure, sir. Not now. I... Ah, my dear Mr. Hargrove. You forgot your honey, sir. Oh. I thought I'd drop it off on the way into town. Oh, how very good of you, wasn't it, Silchester? Well, uh, oh, yes, very. Uh, step inside, sir, step inside. Now, I'll just empty this and return it at once, sir. May I inquire the price? Forty and eightpence will cover it, sir. And you needn't bother about returning the basket now. I'll pick it up on the way back from town. Oh, not at all, not at all. Excuse me just a moment while I put the honey in the pantry and write you a check. Oh, Silchester. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you'll give Mr. Hargrove a drink while I'm gone. What, but you... Uh, oh, uh, wh whiskey and soda? No, thanks. Oh. I'm not a drinking man. Oh, well, I, uh, I, I think I'll have one. Um, I, I, I trust, sir, that your, your wound has caused you no further inconvenience. Wound? Uh, oh, uh, not at all. It's quite healed, thanks. Oh, good. I'm delighted to hear it. Nasty things, wounds. It is a good job you had such efficacious disinfectant about the place. Now, one can't be too careful. No. I see the old boy does some experiments in here. Yes, he's not the only one experimenting around here. What's that? Uh, hmm? Here we are, sir. I trust I've not detained you moderately. Your check, sir. Your basket. Thank you, sir. You needn't have bothered. Oh, not at all, not at all. One moment, please. Yes, sir? Mr. Hargrove. I trust you'll forgive a doddering old man for interfering in your affairs. But shortly prior to your arrival, I was on the telephone to London. And I have some information that may be of great interest to you. I can't think what would interest me in London. Money, sir. I presume that money is of interest to anyone, no matter where it may be. And my needs are slight, sir. Perhaps your ambition is less slight. I don't understand you, sir. Your house, sir. As I told you before, your house is an authentic example of early English architecture. Now, the British Historical Society is ever on the lookout for such reminders of our bygone glories. 
If you will go to London and present yourself at this address, the gentleman named there will pay you an admirable sum for your house and lands. I never go up to London, sir. The sum is quite considerable. I'm not interested in architecture, sir. In money, then? As I told you, my needs are slight. I'm interested in bees. Sorry to disappoint this society. Perhaps you'll convey my regrets to them and to this gentleman. But I don't choose to sell. Don't forget your basket. Oh, of course. Goodbye, sir. Good day. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. You, you told me you were not on the telephone. How could you ring up London? And what was all that about the British Historical Society? I happen to know that there is no fun for buying old houses. And if there were, it would not be expended on an inept and worthless copy. I had to give him a chance, Silchester. But if the offer was fraudulent... The offer was not fraudulent. If he had gone to London, he'd have been paid a considerable sum of money. Providing he destroyed his bees, burned all his formulas and cleared out. The man came here to murder us. There was enough of the liquid on those jars of honey to draw all his bees straight to this house. To us. You see, he understood my offer, but he rejected it. Money means nothing to him. His only pleasure now lies in murder. What, and knowing that he had it in mind to kill us, you, you allowed him to return to release his bees? I'm afraid his bees will find a much closer target for their anger than us. What? What other choice was there? He could never have been brought to justice. You see, I succeeded in duplicating his devilish concoction with one important exception. I removed the identifying odor. His bees will recognize it, but he will not. I impregnated the handle of his basket. He's now on his way home with the murder weapon intended for us, about to be turned against him. What, what horrible news, Alice? About Mr. Hargrove. Poor, queer Mr. Hargrove. What, what happened to Mr. Hargrove, Alice? Struck down he was, sir. Not half an hour ago. The bees, the horrible bees. Oh, Alice. Working in his backyard he was, sir, when suddenly... Oh, Alice. Alice, if you, if, if you don't mind, I, I don't want to hear about it. Nor I, sir, nor I. The very thought it brings me out in bumps all over. Oh, well, uh, your tea's made, sir. And there's a dish of your honey all ready for you. Honey? Oh, no, no, thank you, Alice. I, if you don't mind, I don't think I'll have any honey today. No honey? But you always have your bit of honey, sir. True, Alice, true. But for some unaccountable reason, I don't feel up to it today. In, in fact, Alice, I don't believe I shall ever feel up to it again. I'm very much afraid that I have completely lost my taste for, for, for honey.
Bravery of the A.I. Root Company for his technical advice on beekeeping. presented on behalf of Elgin jewelers everywhere who proudly display beautiful Elgin watches timed to the stars. Wadsworth watches high in value, low in price, and handsome Hatley watch band, the perfect complement for any watch. All quality products of the Elgin National Watch Company. You can give or own nothing finer than an Elgin. The beautiful way to tell time. The Elgin Hour has been chosen to be shown to our armed forces at home and overseas. Jackson Beck speaking. <laughs>